Do you know exactly what a polymer is? Can you tell me some different ways in which they are formed? Do you have any idea about what the future regarding high-tech polymers may entail? If the answer to any of these questions is no, then you're in the right place. So what exactly is a polymer? Well, it's comprised of two components, poly, which means more than one, many, or much, and the term mer, which refers to a mythological sea creature with the upper body of a human and the tail of a fish. However, more interesting, and slightly more relevant, is a synonym for a repeat unit in chemistry. If you haven't guessed thus far, a polymer is a compound consisting of repeat units which can reach enormous sizes due to the very fast reactions that happen in solution. For example, in commercial polythene, the number of repeat units ranges from 1000 to 10,000. Did you know the first synthesized polymer was nitrocellulose, which, when prepared with camphor and dissolved in ethyl acetone, has been used as an effective wound dressing since the US Civil War in 1865? I did not know that. I took an in-depth survey of one person about what they knew about polymers. My 11-year-old sister responded, Plastic. This isn't actually a bad answer, as most plastic materials do consist of polymers. Although, while most plastics are polymers, not all polymers are plastic. Some examples of plastic polymers that you will encounter day to day include polyethylene, polypropylene, and polyvinyl chloride, which I've already mentioned. Non-plastic polymers, such as nylon, are also very common as well as biological compounds like the many nucleotide bases that form DNA, or the amino acids that make proteins. So, how are polymers formed? There are two main ways in which synthetic polymers are formed. These are chain growth polymerization, also known as addition, and step growth polymerization, also known as condensation. Chain growth polymers are made by the addition of alkene monomers to the end of a growing chain, hence the name addition. The end of the chain continues to add more monomers because it is reactive, which can be due to an anion, a cation, or a radical. The main chain, or the backbone, of the polymer simply features the carbon atoms which appear in the alkene group, with the rest of the monomer as a side chain. Step growth polymers are made by multiple condensation reactions, hence the name condensation. As you'll probably know, a condensation reaction involves two large molecules combining and the removal of a smaller molecule, such as water or hydrogen chloride. For example, this molecule of ethanoic acid can react with a molecule of methanol to form methyl ethanoate, which is an ester, and one molecule of water. As you can probably guess, polymers that produce esters are called polyesters, which are used widely as fibres, plastics and coatings. Another important type of step growth polymer is polyamides, such as nylon 6,6. The 6-6 six six refers to the 6-carbon diamine reacting with the 6-carbon diacid. Step growth polymers are different to chain growth polymers in that step growth polymers can grow from both ends of the chain, whereas chain growth polymers can only grow from one end. Now comes the really interesting part, high-tech polymers. You might wonder, how can polymers have high-tech applications? This is a very good question, but there are many uses of polymers in modern technology. Some examples include liquid crystals, polymers as biomaterials, and conductive polymers. I'm going to focus on conductive polymers, as they are particularly interesting. Conductive polymers, as you may have worked out, are polymers that can conduct electricity. Now, it's not as if your plastic bottle will suddenly give you an electric shock. The plastic must be modified before it can conduct electricity. The scientists who figured out how to do that won the 2000 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Like many of the important discoveries in the world of science, this one was somewhat of an accident. Back in the 1970s, Hideki Shirakawa was working with polymers called polyacetylene when he unintentionally gave one of his samples too much of the iodine vapour, the catalyst he was using for the experiment, and created a strange metallic looking polymer that could conduct electricity. By adding the iodine vapour, he was doping the polymer. This means introducing impurities into the pure semiconductor for the purpose of modulating its electrical properties. Imagine a pool table full of billiard balls. The balls are closely packed together so cannot move. However, if you take a few of the balls out, the others can now move around. Conduction works in a similar way. There are very few delocalized electrons that can move around and conduct in the polymer. But if another type of atom is added, in this case iodine, which is one electron short of a full valence shell, 
There are holes where electrons can move to, allowing conduction to take place. Shirakawa investigated further and collaborated with other scientists interested in the potential of these plastics, and thus began the study of conductive polymers. The demand for polymers, especially conductive polymers, will grow at about 26% per year, from an estimated £1.2 billion in 2010 to nearly £4.6 billion in 2015. One important use of conductive polymers is in batteries. Lithium-ion polymer batteries have many applications, such as in the iPhone and larger scale in electric cars. Lithium-ion polymer batteries have evolved from lithium-ion batteries, the main difference being that the lithium salt electrolyte is not held in an organic solvent, but in a solid polymer composite, such as polyacrylonitrile. The advantages of lithium-ion polymer over the lithium-ion design include potentially lower cost of manufacture, adaptability to a wide variety of packing shapes, reliability and ruggedness, as well as lower weight, lower toxicity, and improved recyclability, but with the disadvantage of holding less charge. In October 2010, a lithium-ion polymer-powered Audi A2 covered the record distance of 600 kilometres, which is the distance from London to Glasgow, and as of April 2011, cars powered by these batteries have been responsible for a number of drag racing speed records. This is all fine and dandy. However, the cost of an electric car of this type is currently significantly higher than of a petrol car, but it is likely that with increased production and technological advances, the cost of lithium-ion polymer batteries, and therefore electric cars, will go down meaning a much cleaner and more renewable way to travel. These batteries have appeared in consumer electronics since around 1995, which is the same year that the tau and tau neutrino subatomic particles were discovered, and the film Braveheart was released. Thought you ought to know. Another high-tech application of polymers may protect against bullets for body armour, micrometeorites for satellites, and high-speed particle impact for durable yet lightweight jet engine turbine blades and skins. The material is a complex multi-block copolymer polyurethane, which is made synthetically in the lab by step growth polymerization. The dynamic new polymer is able to stop 9mm slugs, a common pistol and submachine gun round, and seal the holes behind them. The material seems to have both glassy properties, which make it strong and hard, as well as rubbery properties, which make it resilient and able to bend and repair itself. The scientists found that the polymer actually passed its glass transition temperature, an important property for all polymers and liquefied when it came into contact with the high velocity penetration. However, because the polymer is actually comprised of thousands of barely perceptible layers, only some of the material liquefied, while the rest held its shape and strength, allowing the bullet hole to be reclosed upon entrance. Overall, I believe that conductive polymers will no doubt shape the future for the better, both for our benefit, in terms of lowering the cost of electronic products, fewer health risks and more convenience, as well as for the benefit of the environment, with lower toxicity, higher recyclability, and the replacement of other materials that would otherwise have to be mined, such as nickel and cadmium. In the future, I would expect conductive polymers to pave the way for technological advances in every possible field, from cheap light-emitting diodes and mobile phones, to renewably powered automobiles and aviation. Wearing your green slips
Judy in the sky.